Welcome to the Kind Fibers channel. Today we are washing and combing long wool, specifically Iris's wool. This is me shearing him a couple of weeks ago, and this is his wool. So I've already packaged up his wool, and this is a customer's request for me to do, so I'm doing it. I have grabbed her order and I'm in the process here of opening up her wool. You'll see what it looks like coming out of the packages in just a moment. And I wash the wool on the porch in just a basin. Oop, there's the wool. That's one full pound of wool. That's what it looks like coming out. And I like to just put it down in the basin, kind of divide it in half. I wash half a pound at one time. And this is just a sink insert basin from Walmart. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Try to get everything going in the same direction because that tends to help later on when I need to separate out my locks to process. Oh. So just a note, um, I use really hot water when I process my wool. I put it on the stove in a one gallon stock pot and I let it come to a boil. And then by the time I walk from the stove to outside where the wool is, it has cooled to just below boiling so it will not damage the wool. But it's about as hot as wool can properly stand. And I would highly suggest wearing shoes and not being like me while you're doing this with boiling water. I do not put soap in the first rinse. I just get all that nasty, gross stuff off so that the soap can actually get to the wool. And I have actually washed wool without using any kind of soap. Uh, and I really think it's the water that makes a difference, but, uh, yeah, I put the soap in on the second rinse, not the first rinse. And here I'm coming back with the second gallon of hot water. And as far as time between soaks and rinses and all, it's as long as it takes to boil a pot of water. I grabbed a little bit of palm olive. That's what I have. I prefer Ecos. I've used Castilli soap. I've used some ivory. I've used pretty much everything around. Um, Ecos is by far my favorite. But I put in just a smidge and then I kind of splish it around a little bit and then let it soak. And by the time I got to this point, this is the last rinse. There had been two more rinses before that. So a total of five soaks. So five gallons of water for a half a pound. Here's what I had washed last night and has sat out in the sun and dried. And then this plop of wool right here is what I had just been washing on the porch in this video. I just roll it up in a towel. I'm pressing the excess water out. And yes, that is the bed of the farm truck. I have found that that is the safest place to hide the wool that needs to dry from the sheep and the goats and the cow and the dog and the geese and the cats and the duck and the chickens. So I just spread it out on the towel and let it dry out in the sun. And this was actually dry within about four hours.
So I'm back up at the porch and I'm getting ready to comb out what had dried that morning. And I'm loading my comb up. These are Indigo Hound combs. I've had them well over a decade. They are beat up, but they're still going strong. I decided not to fast forward through this uh, and the reason why is because I wanted to give a good representation of the amount of time that it takes to process as far as combing to comb out one handful of wool to make roving. And a note on the curved combs. I like to load them up to about the start of the curve. That's my personal preference. Some people like less. Um, when I first started out, I did a lot less. I only filled them up about halfway to the curve and now I fill them up all the way to the curve. That is something that it just takes the time of getting comfortable with the body mechanics of doing it. Um, that just comes with doing it. I think the biggest piece of advice, um, as someone who's been doing this for years and I by far don't know everything and I'm, you know, there's always more to learn. That's one of the things I love about wool. Um, but one of the big things I've learned is don't be afraid of your wool. Um, you know, don't abuse your wool. Don't put it in the washing machine and walk off and let it agitate. You know, don't felt it. But don't be afraid of it either. Here I am in the first round. The first round is always the hardest. Some of these sheep have really compact locks. Iris is not the most compact, but this is his bridge, so it is a little bit more compact than, say, the dominant wool. Because this is actually bridge that I was coming. What I was washing earlier was dominant. Um, they're actually two separate orders. One person got bridged wash and made into roving and the other was uh, dominant washed and made into roving. Both from Iris and his magnificent 14 pound fleece. I moved the camera because I kept bumping it. We're still on that first pass, that first round. Got down to the end with the race waste wool, pulled that off. And I'm probably fluffing up what's on the comb. Yep. It's been kind of fluffed up. If you notice, I hold the uh, handle on the clamp because it's not the sturdiest with those bar and wood clamps. Regular C clamps work better. I just don't have money for them. They're kind of low down on the I gotta have list. So I make do with these that I have. And they've been working pretty well for about 10 years. So, you know, I just try to be a little bit more judicious with how much force I'm putting on them. I'm 
almost to the end of the first round. There we go. And now starting on the second round. As you see, it's getting easier. Yeah, pick out the little bits of farm. So washing the wool gets out the dirt, the lanolin, the sweat, urine, etc. Um, and combing gets out the vegetable matter. And we're on the third pass. So vegetable matter can be large or it can be teeny, teeny, tiny. Uh, our farm tends to have teeny, teeny, tiny vegetable matter more than larger bits. Um, frankly, I'd rather deal with the larger bits, the teeny, teeny, tinies. Especially for wool that I have to card. Combing's not so bad, uh, but if you have to card wool with teeny, teeny, tiny uh, vegetable matter in it, it is, it is a mess. Okay, and I think we're to the point, yep, we're getting ready to put it back on and then it will be being pulled into roping pretty soon. There I am picking up more farm. Um, if you hear uh, pops in the back, my neighbor is an avid turkey hunter and it is turkey season. And I am pretty sure he was up in his blind getting dinner. Okay, now I'm pulling it off. I don't use a diz. Um, I find they're more trouble than they're worth. So I just pull off in even amounts. Like kind of draft and pull, draft and pull. And if your wool is clean, it pulls off and dizzes off pretty easy. And there we go, roving. And there's big eye, all done up into roving. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Kind fibers, craft no harm. You don't craft harm, do you, Iris? Huh? Do you? You don't? No, you don't. You good boy. <laughs>